Now we're going to learn how to estimate the cost of equity using the CAPM model. So for your projects, you need to be able to do both, to estimate the cost of equity using dividend growth model, the cost of equity using the CAPM model, and then you'll have two different weighted average cost of capitals using these two different methods. And so to estimate the cost of equity using the CAPM model, we also just need a few pieces of information. First, we need a risk-free rate. Next, we need a beta. And then we take beta times a, we can either call this, there's two ways to, to estimate this. One is the expected, expected return, expected return market and minus the risk-free rate. Or some people will recognize this and they'll just call it the market risk premium. And the market risk premium is the expected return market minus the risk-free rate. So on a previous lesson, we learned how to calculate beta for Microsoft and the beta for Microsoft based on the two-year weekly, weekly uh, return relative to the SPY we estimated the beta of Microsoft to be this 1.0438. So we can go ahead and, and refer back to that cell to uh, have our beta. And we can have the equals and go back to our cell here. So now we have our beta. Now, there's many different ways uh, to do a uh, expected return market. Uh, sometimes you can just type in 7% and say the expected return market over a long period of time is 7%. Um, we can also use our information we downloaded in our previous lesson. So we can estimate what the growth rate was for the S&P 500 from 2017 to 2018 and 2018 to 2019 and take the average of that. And so let's go ahead and you know, show you how to do that. So we have the 2018 growth rate is going to be the last observation in, uh, so let's just go by our data, defining our, our data set. So our first observation was on July 31st, 2017. So we want to take the ending observation, which would be July 31st of 2018. So we have July 30th of 2018 minus our beginning observation, which was this one and we want to divide by our beginning observation. So we have our growth rate from 2018 to 2019, July 2017 to 2018 of 16%. And our 2019 growth rate, let's see what that is. So we want to take, again, we have equals, we have our last observation, minus our beginning observation, which will be July 31st or July 30th of 2018 divided by our first observation. Whoops. Oh, I forgot to do a uh, parentheses. So we have to do a parentheses right here. So we have parentheses ending minus beginning divided by beginning. And we have an eight. So both of these are percentages. We can make it look a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, more uh, a little bit more efficient by only having two decimal places. So here we have a growth rate of S&P 500 in 2018 of 16.77%. We have a growth rate of the S&P 500, you know, that was what the market returned. And we can just take an average. I mean, this is, uh, you know, one way to do it. So you type in equals average, and you just take those two observations. And we can say the ex if we expect the market to do about the same as it's done the last two years, we can use an expected return market of 12.59%. If you were to explain that to somebody and say I used a 12.59% for the expected market return because that's what it's returned for the last two years, that would be acceptable. Alternatively, you could say 7%. The market's return on average, people have reported 7% over long periods of time. You could also use 7%. So we'll go ahead and since we calculated it as 12.5, we'll use that. Now risk-free rate. Again, people often, you know, what is a risk-free rate? What is risk-free? We won't get into that in this, in this example, in this tutorial. 
Uh, right now, interest rates are extremely low at the time of this taping. Uh, Risk-free rate for uh, many treasuries is, is hovering around 2%. Um, one could argue it should be higher. One could argue it could be lower. But just for the sake of uh, consistency, let's just say we're going to use a 2% risk-free rate. So we, now we have our, and this again is a, two, a percentage, we have a beta of a security. And we also have our, we're going to use the same risk-free rate here. So risk-free rate is, it, it occurs twice in the, uh, in the formula. So we have cap M, cost of equity using capital asset pricing model, risk-free rate plus beta times expected return market minus risk-free rate. So let's do this step by step. So we have our beta, we have our expected return market. So we can do, this would be expected return market minus risk-free rate, that is the market risk premium. So we have 12.59% minus 2%. This is our market risk premium. So our market risk premium in this case is 10.59%. Next step, you take beta times market risk premium. Beta times market risk premium, and then we have a risk-free rate. And so we add that together, and this is again, this is a percentage, so let's make it look a little bit, a little bit uh, nicer. And so we just add those two things together. So cap M equals our risk-free rate plus It's giving me so many, so many uh, decimal places, but it is. So in this case, using the capital asset pricing model and a two-year weekly beta relative to the SPY, we have a cost of equity using the CAPM model for Microsoft is 13, basically 13.101%. Oops. 13.10%. And it's relatively close to our cost of equity using the dividend growth model, but because we're using different estimates and they're different models, these numbers will, I don't want to say never, but almost never be the same. So, so if, if uh, that is expected, there are different models, different assumptions, and we expect to have different answers. So, but that is how you calculate the cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model.